We got a young core of guys who are all going to be finding a new home next week as the NBA draft. We're a week away from the draft. Combo, I got to start with the number one pick because you have been high on Kate Cunningham for about two years, at least from what I've noticed, at least two years. Is he a lock at number one to Detroit? Yes. You didn't even have to think about it. No, you don't have to think about it. So, so are they even working out Evan Mobley at this point? Or because I, I heard Kate no, already had his initial meeting and workout. They could work out whoever they want, but they're going to take Kate Cunningham. You'd be a damn fool to not take Kate Cunningham with the number one pick in this year's draft. He's already on my team on on two K right now. Here, here, here's why. Even, He's the only if, GM in two K history that trades everything for number one picks. He <laughs> here's here here's why. Even if there are people in that organization that think they shouldn't take Dame, they won't take that risk because if you don't take the obvious pick and something goes wrong, everybody loses their job. Yes. So they're going to they're gonna take Kate Cunningham with the number one pick, and I think he deserves it anyway. What, what, makes, what makes Kate so special? Because like I said, I've, I've seen you for two years really highlight how skilled this kid is. You had even said last year, if he was in last year's draft, you thought he would be a top three or top yeah. four pick. Yeah, how does his game translate to the to the modern day NBA? Well, I think spacing is going to do his game wonders. He really didn't play with other shooters at the, you know, at the college level. In college, going from high school to college, there was one question about him, and it was his shooting. And he proved he could shoot. He proved he was a three level scorer, um, and he has that it factor. The game slows down around him. Uh, I don't think it's fair to compare him to Luca. I don't think it's fair to compare him to LeBron. But he has that effect where the whole game slows down around him, right? He never gets sped up. And I just think he has that hit factor. And his floor is really high, you know? Even if he doesn't reach some crazy potential, I think he has the highest floor in the draft. And I think he's the safest number one pick out of everybody. And, uh, yeah, I just think he's that guy. And I I think it's a no-brainer in my opinion. Let me ask you this, though, Combo. Because I I think he's actually a pretty pretty good defender. But – Defensively, yeah. where do you rank him in, in this draft? Well, there's some guys defensively defensively that are better than him. Um, his high school teammate, Scotty Barnes, is a better defender than him. He's going to be a guy who could reliably guard one through five. You know, we say that about everybody, but with Scotty Barnes, I think it's legit. Mm-hmm. So Scotty Barnes is a better defender than him. Um, who else may be? I mean... Evan Mobley has a chance to be a really good defender. And now as far you know, as two way elite players, though, does, does he? Does yeah, two way. Like, there's a chance that Evan Mobley is going to be able to guard guards at the next level because his athleticism is so flu- fluid and the length that he has and the, the ability to slide and raise. So you could make that case for Evan Mobley and Scotty Barnes being a better defender than, than Cade. But Cade's right up there, man. Cade could guard guards. He could slide his feet. He could get low. You know, he could pressure full court. He's going to be big enough to guard big. So, yeah, those three guys are probably three of the best defenders, and they're going to go – you know, I would have Scotty Barnes in the top five. He might go six, you know, um, with what the NBA decision makers do. But, yeah, those are probably the three best defenders off the top of my head. Because they, right they, yeah, they, they don't really talk about Scotty's defense. They, they, don't, they, don't, they don't talk too much about his defense. And I, I, I thought he yeah, was a pretty he's a good, good defender. defender. Yeah, yeah, he's a good defender. He's he's gonna be an NBA ready defender, you know, definitely. Just offensively, definitely. he does so much. There's so much to to, to talk about, and I, I feel like people don't, don't talk enough about his defense. You're right. I think you're right. I think that's spot on. Yeah, I think people don't talk about his defense. I think he's good in so many things, and he doesn't have glaring weaknesses. And when you're the number one pick, they're gonna nitpick at you anyway. Like we're not even looking for Evan Mobley weaknesses, but. We're all looking, not me. I'm saying we as the media and the pundits and the fans, like everybody together, not really we in terms of me, but everybody is just nitpicking at at, uh, Cade Cunningham because he's the number one pick. And nobody's looking for weaknesses with Evan Mobley because he's the number two pick, you know? And that's that's the way it's going to go. That's how it is, though. You know the number one guy? Yeah, that's that's, that's how it is. That's how it is, you know? And look, I, I I I don't think it's fair to compare him to LeBron or Luka. He won't, there's a good chance he'll never reach that level because he doesn't have the athleticism of LeBron. And, you know, we all know Luca was a special talent, you know, a Euro, Euro League MVP at 19. So it's unfair to compare him to those guys, but I think he's definitely the number one pick in this draft. Yeah, we're going to get into Scotty Barnes in a minute too, because I know you're very high on him. Um, yes. In terms of Cade, and then we'll move on to some other prospects. 
who would you, who do you feel is a, a fair comparison, whether it's someone currently in the league or in the past? Man, that's really tough because I think he's a big, you know, initiator that can handle the basketball. So you got to compare him to, you know, the LeBrons and the Lucas, but I would say he's probably the light version of that. You know, I don't think he'll be them. So yeah, those two guys are, you know, he's not the athleticism. He doesn't have the athleticism of LeBron. What about and Scottie? he doesn't, and he does, Scotty Pippen? Yeah. Um, Scotty Pippen was a way better athlete and even better defender. And but Kate I think is going to be, is coming in more Kate, Kate is going to be, Kate is going to be a better shooter, a three level scorer. And yeah, I just think they're different. You know, Scotty was a better athlete and Kate is going to be the better shooter and, you know, the better scorer. And the NBA is just different now. They kind of value these guys higher than they ever did. So Scotty Pippen type players would have more of a role now than he did back then, even though obviously, I mean, his role was tremendous with the Bulls, but you know, they're really building teams around this prototype with Cade Cunningham. So yeah, Scotty better athlete, but Cade's a better shot maker. All right. At number two, Houston Rockets. You you recently had put up a a post of, of some scenarios where you thought who could go number two. I'm really high on Jalen Green. Do you okay, think me too? Do you do you think this is a possibility where Houston trades out of it? Is Evan Mobley more of a lock here? Because everything I've been reading and hearing is that it is these two guys, Cade and Evan at one and two, and then it's kind of a bit of a drop off. But again, I think very highly of Jalen Green. Where do you think Houston goes with number two? So let's make this clear because we're going with who I think these teams will pick, not with who I think should they should pick, right? Correct. Who, who do you, no, no. Well, you tell me, who, who would you take if you're Houston at number two? Well, who I would take is Scotty Barnes, but they're not going to take Scotty Barnes. They're going to take Evan Mobley, I think. And to your point about Jalen Green, I'm really high on Jalen Green. I think he might have the most upside. As much as I like Cade's floor, I really like Jalen Green's upside because of the, his athleticism, what he showed in the G League bubble against really good competition. He improved over time. He's probably the best athlete in this draft, and he proves to be a shot maker and a guy who can make adequate decisions. So I, I'm really high on Jalen Green, and he might have the most upside in this draft. He might have the most superstar potential, even though I think Kate has a great chance to be a superstar as well. And I know I said a lot right there. I would go with Scotty Barnes, but I think they're going to go with Evan Mobley. Because that was my next thing, because so Houston also has uh, Christian Wood. So you don't feel like that's going to that would affect who they pick, whether they go Mobley or, 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 or Green? Yeah, that's a great question, because I think often you go with best available. But in this case, I'd like to move forward with Christian Wood. And I do think Scotty Barnes and Christian Wood is a better fit going forward. Um, but there's definitely a case that Evan Mobley or Jalen Green is the best available, better than Scotty Barnes. But I would go forward with Christian Wood because I really like him. And he's a little bit outside those guys' timeline. But... I can play both of them together. If you, if you draft Evan Mobley, how effective can Mobley and Christian Wood be on the floor together? Yeah, I think there's a scenario where it could work. And, you know, when the whole league goes small, you know, we could say we go big and it might really work. Like sometimes when they zig you zag, stuff like that works, right? Because Evan Mobley could guard guards. Christian Wood could slide his feet and they could be versatile on, they could be versatile enough on defense and then really punish you on offense. So that could work as well. So, you know, the answer to all of this is that I would take Scotty Barnes, but I think they're going to take Evan Mobley at number two. Yeah, I think personally, I'm just enamored by the thought of Kevin Porter Jr. and Jalen Green on the same team. I just think yeah, that's super, interesting. That's interesting. Super athletes who are shot makers. Um, similar. Yeah. I, and, and again, not to compare it because these guys are more established, but almost like what Boston is doing with, with Brown and Tatum, where you have these interchangeable wings. And my only concern with Evan Mobley, I think he's super athletic. I just don't know if he has the demeanor yet. You know, I watched a little bit of him last year. And he's a little passive. Granted, he's very young. He's going to fill out a little bit more. He's going to put a little more weight on him. But if you're drafting a guy to be, you know, at this high, you're expecting him to kind of be the face and kind of be productive right away. So there's, there's that also added pressure of that. I mentioned that on my last podcast. No, I don't know if it's my last podcast because I dropped one today. But on a podcast about the draft with Adam Stanko, um, yeah, I talked about that. Nobody's talking about Evan's weaknesses and – we're all talking to everybody's trying to find weaknesses for Cade and why he's not the number one pick. 
But that's one thing I did see. I mean, there sometimes seems to be, you know, a lack of aggression, maybe a little bit of a lack of a motor. But there's so many things he does great. And when I think of Evan Mobley, Evan Mobley, I think of fluidity. He's such a fluid athlete for his size that I think he'll be good. But you're right. We could consider that a weakness for him, maybe motor and aggression and demeanor and body language. Who do you what? think has the better career, uh, Mobley or, or, or Suggs? Mobley, I would say. I would, and, uh, I would what, say about, what about Cade? With who's which which two? Mobley or Cade? Who you think has? has I, I, yeah, I think Cade will have. I think Cade will be the better NBA player. I mean, I just have Cade best available in the draft. You know. What about what about Cleveland at number three? You know, we're we're hearing the talk that they're probably shopping Sexton. Obviously, they've got, they've got Garland there as well. Um, they've got a lot of they got a lot of things they need to figure out and a lot of questions they need to be answered there. What do they do at number three? Well, so we're going with what I think the GMs will do. So we yes. have Kate at one. We have uh, Mobley at two. You got to go best available here and go with your guy, Green. Um, and it doesn't matter about position. You know, you're a rebuilding team here. Even though I, I was more about fit for the last pick, with this pick, you just go with best available and you go with Jalen Green. Really high upside. Uh, he just has a chance to be a superstar in this league. And you don't worry about who's on your team at that point. You know, because I think at that point, best available is quite obvious. And I mean, if if, if let's just say if, if if Green is the best player available, it still fits for them because they're more than likely going to lock up uh, exactly out into a long term deal. So you got your big man, and they're probably going to deal Sexton. Yeah, and yeah. They, yeah I, I don't know if they trade Sexton or not. I know that they've been talking about it, but if you don't, you got your point guard, you got your your, your wing, and you got your big, and then you know you kind of build from there. Yeah, yeah, they're probably going to flip Kevin Love this offseason as well. Flip him or... or uh, yeah, or I mean, off. yeah. Who knows? That's going to be interesting, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we got to see That's how that plays out. Number four with Toronto. What do you see them doing there? Um, they still got some pieces from that championship winning team. They had a down year this year. And I think it, it was the exception because, remember, they played all their home games down in Florida. Um, it's a high pick for them. Do, do you see them holding on to the pick? Do you see them possibly trading the pick what do you think Toronto does at four yeah I think Suggs makes sense there um I think Kyle will eventually be out and it's just going to be a great fit I think he fits the franchise's personality and culture really well and you know a football player who's a really good athlete you know um, has that aggression he's not the athlete that Jalen Green is He's not the athlete that Jalen Green is, but he's a really good, he's going to be a really good NBA athlete. And I think you go with Suggs here. Yeah. He, he's polished too. I think he's polished. I think he's going to be a good NBA player. I think a good comparison for him, an NBA comp could be Drew Holiday. You know, I like that comp for him. I like, I like Suggs a lot. Yeah. I, I notice, you know, time to time, the, there's not a, a player from the championship team in the top three. I noticed that happens. That happens a lot. So why don't why why is Davian Mitchell not a top three pick? Or um, I was I, I trying to play from what's that oh, kid? With, with Mitchell, I mean, and Davion Mitchell top three. Yeah, I was about to say with, with Mitchell, uh, he doesn't compare to these guys we talking about. And then also, the NBA is big on upside. Davion Mitchell is twenty two, so. I think, and I like him, but I think what you see is what you're going to get. I don't know if there's much more ceiling there with him. Well, yeah, I mean, I, 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 it's a great story. I love what he did in the tournament, winning the championship, but I don't even know if I would take Mitchell in the lottery, to be honest. That's, um, what I'm, that's, what I'm, that's, that's my point. I'm like, I noticed yeah. that a lot of times we don't see guys from the championship team necessarily in, no, in, those, in those top picks. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, you know, it's it's how your game will translate. It's what kind of potential you have. It's your skill set. It's a lot that go into it. We're more, we're more trying to see how a player's game would translate to the next level than even their accomplishments sometimes. When accomplishments do matter, you know, they do matter for sure. Yeah, and it varies from draft to draft because we, we have seen it at times. You know, when Emeka Okafor came out a UConn, he was a top five pick. You know, they had come off a national championship. So it, it, it varies from time to time. And Combo, I wanted to get your thoughts on this because watching uh, Jalen Suggs, like I said, I like him. I like his game. I know he's not super athletic, but he reminds me a lot of Darren Williams when Darren Williams came out of Illinois. 
do, do you feel that the, the comparison is there in terms of game and, and flow and how he controls the offense? Because that, that's who I see when I see him play. Well, Darren Roy, and I do think Jalen Suggs is actually a really good athlete. I, you know, yeah, mm-hmm. I, do, I, do, I, think, I do think Jalen Suggs is a good athlete. But Darren Williams was bigger. Darren Williams was a better shot maker. And he was probably a real point guard when I don't know if Suggs is a real point guard. You know, so I think that's some of the differences. If he gets to Darren Williams level, man, that's a great pick at number four, you know. Darren, Darren Williams in his peak. So, uh, yeah, I think Darren Williams, well, obviously, you know, he fell off eventually, but da- Darren, I don't know. I mean, if, that was like, yeah, Darren Williams already was in the yeah. league like 10 years before he started. Yeah, yeah. like I don't, I don't, I, I'm not sure if Jalen Suggs will ever reach Darren Williams' peak, but, you know, like I don't think Drew Holiday was at, as great as Drew Holiday is, I don't think he was even at Darren Williams' peak, right? So I think kind of we could look at like, Drew Holiday is is a good peak or is a good, like, best-case scenario for Suggs. What about Orlando at number five? They completely rebuild and they traded Vucevic last year. What what do they do at five? They're always in love with these tweener big men, right? The Mo Bambas, the Jonathan Isaacs. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, they've had had, had a tough time in the draft. I mean, if it's me, I'm going with Scotty Barnes from what we're going with so far, but I think they'll take Jonathan Kaminga because, as you said, they're in a total rebuild. And, um, you know, that's who I think they will go with. That's not who I would probably take, even though Kaminga has a lot of potential. He has an NBA frame. He's really athletic. His shot looks good, even though his percentages aren't great at times. So I do think they'll go with Jonathan Kaminga here. Uh, High potential. Very young, very young, very high potential. I mean, it would only make sense. Like I said, you you throw him in the collection with Mo Bamba and, and uh, Jonathan Isaac. <laughs> yeah, so. that, that's the that's that's the. If you're looking at it in a pessimistic way, then yeah, you're right. You are correct. <laughs> I guess I am then. Um, Oklahoma City at number six. What do they do well, now? Well, now, so they got to get Shea Gillis another player there. You got to go with Scotty Barnes at this point, right? If we're going with our draft, so yeah, Scotty Barnes. Best available. He's an NBA ready defender. He's one of the best passers in the draft. And the swing skills of shooting. If he be, if he becomes a good shooter, an average to good three point shooter, he's an all star in this league. So I go with Scotty Barnes right there, and I'm really high on Scotty. I think he's going to be a great NBA player. Golden State at seven. Before you tell me if they going who they pick, do you think they keep the pick or do you think they they trade it away? Because obviously they seem to be in a, in a mode of trying to compete right now. They trade it away, but let's have fun and okay. you know, act like they're act right. like they're. Uh, who, who are they taking here? <laughs> they're gonna draft here, and there's a chance they can. So, uh, I want this to come through. I want all of these picks to come true. So hopefully, you know, we can, I can't be totally correct if they do trade it, right? Because we're drafting here. So hopefully they do, and we could uh, we could look back at this, and everything will be right on the money. But I think they will go with Book Night here, um, New York City kid. New York City mentality, a great ISO score. I think the shooting is a little bit better than we thought. I think he's more athletic than a lot of NBA teams think after they saw that pro day. So, yeah, I'm going with Book Knight here, New York City kid. And, uh, yeah, I think he's the best available player at this point. I really like his game, and I think he's going to be a dynamic ISO score in the NBA. I like Book Knight a lot as well. I, I would be interested to see how it would work there, especially with Clay coming back. But I like Book Night. Eight yes. with, with Orlando. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Trip. No, you know what? Go ahead, go ahead. Because I'm, I'm gonna, once you finish, I'm going to ask. Because there's three guys I want to ask Combo about. All right. Number eight, Orlando's on the board again. Who would you have them taking here? They've already got their collection between the big men, Combo. They, they got their, they got their well, we three could go, monster. We could, go, we could go with – I don't think this guy would be considered a big man, even though he's tall. Um, and he's a safer pick than Kaminga. He doesn't have the upside of Kaminga, but he could be a really good NBA player. Ron's Wagner, an NBA ready defender. I think he could put up some numbers right away. So you swing with the fences with the first pick with Kaminga, and then you take the second pick, you take a safer pick for your second draft pick. So I'll go with Franz Wagner here. Mm, okay. Or I think they would I think they will go with Franz Wagner is the better way to put it. Trip, go ahead. You said you had a question there? Yeah. So all right. So Three guys uh, combo, Trey Mann, 
Zaire Williams and Josh Giddy. What about him? What do you what do you what are your thoughts on them? Zaire had a lot of hype and potential going into college. He really disappointed this year. Stop He's him. one of those guys. It's going to be high variance with him. He could become really good, or it's not really a safe pick. He could, you know, if he plays like he did in college, he could struggle in the NBA. So, but he definitely has the tools. That, he was projected you know, before, before. Yeah, exactly. He just struggled this year. And, you know, he, and, and it was a tough season for everybody. And I heard he, he dealt with some like really tough personal issues. So maybe that had something to do with it. Um, so, yeah, he's kind of like a hit or miss type prospect, like swing for the fences type prospect. Uh, Trey Mann is a scorer, a uh, dynamic scorer. He's a bucket getter. Uh, you know, the Knicks might draft him, I think, but I would probably take Bones Highland before him, even though he's a bucket getter as well. And Josh Giddy, great feel for the game. Uh, defense could be an issue with him. Great passer, great playmaker, great size for his position. His shot's a little bit slow from the outside, but he could work on that. The shooting is an NBA skill that you could get better at, but just great feel, great passer, and just a big playmaker that I think will be good at this level. And if you get him like in the early teens, I think he could be a steal and, um, you know, and be a really good NBA player. Yeah, that's what I, I think. I think with, with Zaya, just because again, you know, everything with this past season, I think that him going later in the draft will probably work it out in his favor because he'll probably get to a, a playoff team. Um, where he'll be able to 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 learn a lot a lot faster, and um and with Giddy, I think there's a I think there's a big upside for that kid. I think that depending on where he lands, he could actually be really good. Trey's gonna go a little bit earlier, I believe, in the draft. I think I do think um he's one of the the guys that the Knicks look at unless they wind up trading uh the the picks that they have to to try to move up. But I think he's probably someone that's on their radar. Yeah, I agree. Josh Giddy, great feel for the game. Um, I think the Knicks are probably looking at Bones Highland, Trey Mann, or Shreve Cooper with those picks. Oh. Eric, you on the... Oh, my fault, my fault. Let's get to the next one. Um, Sacramento at number nine. They've got some questions as well. Uh, they took your man, Halliburton, last year. He, he slipped to them. It was a great pick for them. What do they do now moving forward? I think they go with the safe pick here, Moses Moody, uh, three and D potential. I mean, I actually not even potential. I think he's a three and D guy in the NBA. And then the potential is he could be like a secondary creator as well. We see some flashes of that. So I think it's the safe pick, Moses Moody. I might go in a different direction, but I think that's where Sacramento would go. And I like Moses Moody. Um, it's, I think he's another one of those uh, underrated defensive guys as well. Yeah, yeah, he definitely, he'll be a 3 and D guy. He's kind of like, not the same player as Sadiq Bey, but just you kind of knew Sadiq Bey was going to be a good 3 and D guy coming into the league. I think it's the same thing with Moses Moody, even though they're, they're slightly different players. That's a solid pick because they're probably moving on from Harrison Barnes. So that's solid. Yeah. They, they need to fill yeah. that type of role as well. Uh, New okay. Orleans at 10. I think, this is a no I think this is a no-brainer. Um, you have to keep Zion happy. You have to keep B.I. happy. And how do you make them happy? With shooting around them, plus shooting. So I take Corey Kispert here. Um, I think he's going to be an NBA shooter. I think there's a chance he could be a plus defender as well. And I think he's a great fit there. And, you know, he was very successful at the college level. And I think he'll have a successful NBA career as well. And I think it's a good fit right there for New Orleans. Okay, fair enough. You heard it there first from Combo. Now, Combo, I know you're big on Scotty Barnes. Where do you think is the best fit for Scotty, though? Yeah, I like him in Houston. You know, I want to see him, KPJ, and um, Christian Wood, you know, play together. I think him and K, like KPJ is not a pure point guard, but he could initiate offense, right? And they could, bo they could both initiate offense together. Mm -hmm. And then KPJ could play off the ball as well. And I think he's a really nice fit with, um, Christian Wood, because Christian Wood is such a great lob target, a pick and pop target, and Scotty Barnes is one of the best passers in this draft. And we know what he'll bring to you on the defensive end. He's going to be an NBA ready defender. So I think the best fit for him is Houston at number two. Who, who's your sleeper in this draft? Who's the guy that you think is going to probably fall out of the lottery that is going to be a very good player, an immediate impact player? 
Well, my sleeper from the beginning been Bones Highland, but he's not that much of a sleeper anymore from what he did in combine. I remember when I, I remember I saw some mock drafts where he wasn't even on the board, like first or second round from what I remember. And yeah, he, and what happened, he declared for the draft. He just had a, he had a combine game that was crazy. He went off. Uh, he even showed he had some playmaking skills and the guy is just a hooper and he, he's climbing up the boards. So he's really no longer a sleeper anymore, but I'll, I'll stick with Bones Highland as my sleeper guy. He no, was but we, he was a sleeper, so we can. He, you know, he, he combo's right though because the last time we got together, that was a name that you had mentioned to me, and when yeah. I looked him up to just get familiar with his game, at that time he was projected as a mid second rounder. I remember, See? I remember we were talking about yeah. it. So as you said, now now he's starting to catch everyone's attention, and and, um, and it's interesting. It's the same thing happened with Scotty Barnes because people are talking about Scotty Barnes top five right now. And which I think is, is, you know, I think he is a top five prospect, but before he wasn't in that top five. Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Live from the camp. Hey. Come on, live. Bye, the uh -huh. This is Hi, Real Fans, Real Talk. Talk. Real Fans, Real Talk. We as real as you thought. Real